Hey guys, UD2 here with the first of many videos where I will recreate cool mechanics in mainstream video games. Now in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to recreate super hot slow motion mechanic. Now personally I've been wanting to play this game for a long time so I figured I'd try making it myself. Because it looks fairly simple. But uh, just a quick overview of what I'm going to be showing you in the video. First of all I'll be showing you how to make it so that whenever the player stands still time slows down to whatever speed you want it. And then whenever you start moving again, it will speed back up to the normal speed. And this will affect all actors as well. You don't have to do anything special to make it a specific actor. It just affects all of them. But uh, before we get into the video, there's a free download link below for the sound effects I use in this video. So if you want to get those, you can follow along properly. Just go quickly download those before the video starts. And if you want to see how I set up the first person character I'm using in this video, check the description below for the link. It's very simple. It's just a couple minute video and then you can catch up with us. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and get into it now. So I'm going to start off by just simply cloning a first person character I already have. We're going to call this one super hot. And don't worry about this message. All this says is just uh, sometimes it will mess up the code or the blueprints, whatever you prefer to call it, and will bug some of them out. I've only ever had that issue with big ones, so you shouldn't ever have a problem cloning small projects. It's just the big projects that I've had issues with. But uh, to start off with, we're going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this SFX. We're going to import our sound effects into here. These are down in the description if you haven't downloaded them already. And we're going to go ahead and open up our third person character. I'm going to get a couple of things out of the way to start with. The first one will be adding our audio. Now these are used to play our sound effects that we just finished adding. We're going to call these Begin Slow Mo S SFX. Kind of copy paste. And we're going to Make another one of those. Control C, Control V. And then I'm gonna call this one in slow mo. I'm gonna come here and we're gonna to come to our drop down tab. And it's like begin slow motion SFX. And then we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. Make sure you turn auto activate off. And then we're gonna go end slow mo SFX. And again, auto activate off. Back up to the top and then select end slow motion SFX. Okay, now we need to make a box collision and then we need to make sure you have box collision selected and then we're gonna have to add a post process. Okay. Now that's all you have to do for those ones. For now, we can just leave that. We're now gonna come to our event graph. Make sure you have a little bit of space for this. This will take up some space. And then we're gonna start off by making an event tick. And then from the event tick, we're going to drag out and create a branch. Okay. And then we're going to come back here. We're going to select our character movement, drag that out, and just drop it. And then we're going to drag out velocity. Now I will be explaining what it is I'm doing later on so that you understand what your code does. But for now, I'm just going to quickly do it all so that we can go back over it so you're able to get a better understanding. We're going to add a vector length. And then from the vector length, I'm going to drag out. We're going to create a greater than flow. And we're going to drag that into our condition for the branch. Okay. Now we're going to come back up to the top here. We're going to select our begin slow mo SFX. We're going to drag that out. We're going to go play. And then we're going to connect this one to true. Uh, drag that up a little bit and then we're going to make another one of these except for end slow mo this time and then again drag that out select play connect this one to false make sure there's a bit of space in between them and yeah, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our post process in so it turns it on and off so first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drag out your post process and then we're going to go set enable and then we're going to hook this one up to the top and once you've done that, we're going to come down to the bottom again. Now for this, you can just copy it and then paste. Connect that one. Now make sure that you have the bottom one ticked, but the top one is not ticked. Now we're going to add our actual slow motion effect now. So we're going to drag out from the top, we're going to go execute. And then you go execute console command. And then from the command, we're going to drag out, we're going to go build string. Make sure you select float. And then from that, we're going to come down into our prefix. We're going to enter in S-L-O-M-O -O, and then space. Make sure you have that space at the end of it or it will not work. Now we're going to change our in float to 0 0.3. You can change it to lower, you can change it to higher. I prefer 0 0.3 personally. 
if you want it to be slow-mo make sure it is somewhere between zero and one the uh, lower the number is the slower it will be Okay, now we're going to come and we're going to select this with Control c and then Control v to paste it we're going to enter a node into that one and we're going to make sure that we actually turn this one to one now this will reset our slow motion back to one which is the default speed and this one will actually make it go slow-mo Okay, so now that we've entered all of this in, I'm just going to simply create a little box around it. And we're going to call this box... Oh, by the way, you create a box in case you don't know. You select everything and then you press C. So that should uh, specify that. Start. I'll zoom in a bit. It is start slash stop slow motion. I'm going to go dash and then turn on PP. PP standing for post processing. On slash off. Now that's just a simple way to make sure everything's labeled so you know what's what in it. But anyway, what it is I'm actually doing here is I'm getting our character's movement for the character that uh, is written in. And then we're getting the velocity. Velocity is the speed at which our character is moving. The thing with velocity is though is that it can't be converted into a float. So what I've done is I've gotten the vector length and then I've returned that as a float value. And then we've taken the float value and put it into this node. Now all this node does is it returns true if a is greater than b. So if this uh, vector length here is greater than zero, then it will return true up here. If it is true, we will uh, begin slow-mo SFX by actually just turning it off. And then it will set post-processing to false, so it will be turned off. And it will make sure that the speed is set to 1, which is the default. But if it is false, meaning that we are moving slower than it or going just what zero in this case then it will begin to uh what's it called it'll begin to make our slow motion effects come on now i know it does say end slow-mo sfx but it does start it here i know it's a little confusing but it also turns our post-processing on and sets our slow motion speed to 0 0.3 so i'm going to go ahead and i'll save this just for now in case anything happens and we're now going to come into our post-processing now under our post processing we're going to come down a little here we're going to select enabled and turn that off and unbound and turn that off now you might want to have enabled on by default i don't see any reason to have it on because i turned it on and off here which is what you will need either way but the unbound one basically what that does is instead of using the post processing's default uh area to apply the post processing effect to we've gone ahead and used the box that we created so I'm going to come back in here because I actually forgot to do this and we're going to make this box bigger. Now to do this you just press R and then drag out from these little things, the axes, and just make sure it's bigger than our character. It doesn't have to be huge, it doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as it's bigger than it. We're going to come back into our post processing now and the first effect we're going to do is under lens and then image effects and it is vignette intensity, grain jitter and grain intensity. Now I'm going to set the first one to 1, which is as full as you can possibly do it. And I'm going to go the second one to 0 0.08. And then last but not least, 0 0.12. Now I'd recommend messing around with these until you find what it is you want perfectly. But basically, just so you can quickly see what that does, is it adds a little bit of uh, darkness around the corners. You can see it's kind of shady. And there's also a bit of like kind of blurry fuzziness to it. Or uh, noise, as a lot of people would refer to it. Now I've just got it toned down a little bit because the noise can be too much but it just gives you a little bit of a slow motion effect so you can see now it's back to normal and then if we go stop stand still there you go now I don't think that's quite enough for a visualization of the effects so I'm going to go ahead and also change the color so now to do that we're going to come down into color grading which is just here and then we're going to go and select where is it? it's global and we're going to turn on saturation then we're going to select a color for it. Now the color that I tend to use, I'll go get the exact numbers for it, is 0 0.39, and then 0 0.35, then 2, and 1. Now you can select whatever colors you want, it doesn't matter, this is just my personal preference. I'd recommend again messing around with this, but what that will do if you compile and then save, and then press play is you'll see now it has like a slightly kind of blue color to it it's nothing crazy but it's just a little bit yeah okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add one final little thing because this does change a little bit as you can see with the text here 
but it's not quiet enough. I want to add a little bit of blue around the screen. I don't just want to change the colors of everything else. So I'm going to go back into our character again under post process. I'm going to come down to, uh, where is it? Rendering features. And then from here, we're going to go through global illumination. I'm going to turn this one on. And then we're going to hit the drop down tab here. We're going to change our color. So I'm going to go with zero and then 0 0.34255 and then one. So what this will do is it'll just again increase the blue. Personally, I like the blue as the outer, shade, uh, outer shading. But what this does now, as you can see, there's a little bit of a blue color here. You can increase the strength of it if you want. You can make it a different color if you want. This is my personal preference again. But now you can see when we run around normally, this is us in our normal speed. So you can imagine if we were in super hot right now, we'd be you know, shooting the enemy, stealing their weapons, throwing them at them. And then if we stand still, it now goes into slow-mo. It has the sound effect, it changes colors. And just to prove to you guys that this is slow-mo for everything other than character, uh, your character itself, I'm gonna add an object. We'll go ahead and drag this over in front of our character just so you can easily see it fall down. And we're gonna come down here on the right, make sure you're under details. And then we're gonna turn simulate physics on. I'm just gonna save it just to make sure nothing goes wrong. And then we'll hit play. You can see now it's falling in slow motion. If I walk, it goes back to full speed. And then if I kick it, oh wait, I can't kick it just yet. I gotta uh, reduce the weight of it. Let's make this, it was five kilos. And to do that, I just uh, press mass in kilos and then change it to five. And you can see again, it's falling and then it's slow-mo and then it's falling and I can kick it. Yeah, I'll give it a better kick, there we go. And then it's in slow-mo bouncing off the walls and that speeds up. So again, you can mess around with the speed however you want, the different effects, you can change the audio if you want, it's all up to you. I'm just showing you my general style for how I tend to do slow-mo like this. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed the video, let me know down in the comments, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this on a different topic, let me know. If there's a uh, particular game you want to see a mechanic from, just post it down in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you with a video. Anyway guys, that's all now. See ya.